All right, so next on our list is our flared fitting, and our flared fitting has some benefits, such as we don't have to run nitrogen through, we don't have to worry about oxidation, we don't have to worry about overheating. As for soft solder, we don't have to worry about the acids, we don't have to worry about the soft solder getting inside of the system or vibrations breaking it loose. However, we do still have to worry about this fitting done correctly. So people either love these or hate these. The good news is you don't see them with residential AC. They are still used pretty heavily in commercial and they're now being used pretty extensively with ductless. Key with all the flares is this flare that we do in the fields to be done correctly. So this is the type of a cone edge. We take this soft copper and we make this cone edge which we call a flare. And that flare fits up against another fitting which is usually brass. It fits in together like this. This fitting right here is what makes the seal. This is soft copper. So this soft copper seals up against that and the back of this nut right here is going to pull it all together. So as it pulls together like so and we tighten it, it makes a good proper seal. Now the catch is, is that that copper on the end where we make that flare, that is essential. That is the seal of the system. So if this piece right here is not done correctly, then the whole entire thing is going to be a fail. This is soft copper, so as it squeezes against here, it mouths or connects or fills in all the little impurities in the brass, and that's what makes the seal. Now, notoriously, people have ran into problems where they have leaking flares, so what do they do? They then over-tighten this fitting right here, the flare nut. And if you over-tighten the flare nut, it puts that much extra pressure on this flare. If you put extra pressure on the flare, it causes this copper to squeeze out even more and it cr cracks or it fatigues. So people over tighten these and they cause them to leak by simply over tightening them. There's a torque wrench and we torque these connections down. We put the proper amount of torque on there and that seal would be done correct. Number one is making the proper seal. Remember when I said that that copper is what makes that seal? That is very, very important. That's what seals it. Now in this unit, you see all this blue gunk on here? This is a product called Leak Lock. So somebody is evidently had an issue with this leaking and they put all this Leak Lock on, but that Leak Lock only fits on the threads itself. Where the seal is taking place is right here. It's right here in this little section. So this didn't do anything for stopping the leak. Now a little trick is you can put a little drop, a little drop of Nylog right here on this fitting and it helps make that seal. Spin it around there, it makes that, helps make a good seal. They also make a product, it's a type of gasket material that fits between these. So if you have one that's not working right, you can put that gasket material between it and then torque them up and it works pretty good. But the gasket material I've heard has issues when people over tighten them, it cracks that gasket material. So it all goes back to being done correctly. And this one has oil all over it, so even this leak lock they put on did not work. So this is our flared in. This is what's most important. This is our flare. And on the sides here, there's all this rough edges. Well, these are impurities. These are cracks. This is either from A, improper making the flare, or B, they over tightened this flare. Either one causes it. If I look on the side, there's a little bit of copper here and a whole lot more copper here. So somebody didn't flare this correct in the first place. So this flare was done bad in the first place and somebody kept tightening it up and tightening it up trying to fix it and it would not fix the leak. And that person's probably going around hating flares. The solution is we cut that flare off and remake it. We're going to be using tubing cutters. And what a lot of people don't know is that our tubing cutters have a groove right here. Well, the purpose of that groove is to cut off these flares. I can put the flare in just like so. And as I tighten the blade down, the blade now is right behind that flare. And I lose very little copper. So now I can cut this flare completely off and make a new flare. And if I make the new flare correctly, deep enough, with the proper tension, it's not going to leak. Making this flare correct is important and also not over flaring it or over squishing that copper when we make the flare and when we tighten it together, not over tightening it. Let's take a look at what that flare looks like when we cut it open. So I've cut it open two different ways. Here this side we can see, it's gonna be hard to see with the camera. So right here we can see that little bit of copper. That is the copper from this soft copper. That's what's making the seal right there this lock nut pulls against the copper on this side and it squishes the copper against the other side, the union side on this other piece. So it squishes that copper between. The copper is what's soft. The brass is the harder of the two. So the copper makes that seal. Now here you can see that we have that gap and here we also have a gap and then here's where the threads are they tried putting the sealing in. 
So usually these will leak right around here and then it comes back around and starts leaking on this edge here. So putting that thread seal on the side it really doesn't do much good at all. Take a look at this one where we cut it completely open and here you can see that little bit right here, just this little bit of copper. That's right what's making that seal. That is our flare. Then you can see our flare nut pulled up here. And then here is the other fitting right there. So once it pulls it all tight, it makes a good solid connection. It's got to be torqued correctly for it to hold. So it just slides right inside of that connection. So if we make that flare correct, it works good. Just this is not a how-to video. But let's talk about a few different tools we can use to make this flare fitting. The most popular forever and ever tool was this Imperial Toolkit. Uh, come with tubing cutters in here and it come with our flaring block and our flaring tool. So this, notice how we have this cone shape right here. This cone shape is what makes the cone of our flaring tool right here. So that makes the cone. So this block here holds our copper. This other piece here latches on and then when we screw this thread down it adds pressure and it takes the copper and it makes the copper flare out like this. But you can see this one's not done straight or square. It's off to one side. So the length that it's up inside of this flaring box is very important as well as the type of copper used and making sure that we centered everything up. Again, this is not a how-to video. I'm not showing you how to do this. I'm just showing you an introductory to the tools needed to make that happen. Now this was my original flaring block set. We'd open this piece here up. We'd slide this back. We'd put our copper through and we selected what size copper it was that we were working with with all the different sizes right here in one. But we'd slide that in and then once we pulled this lever, it gripped onto the copper and then we'd put this on and as we spun this in, this would start forcing that cone shape into the copper to make that flare. That model's come a long ways in a flaring block such as this one. Same thing, it has all the pieces together. I can pick what, uh, what size copper I'm working with. I gotta make sure they match. 3 8 and I make this side 3 8 and then as I pull this piece in, now it latches and then I can tighten this guy up here. <laughs> then as I would start to flare this in, move this tool in, this piece would drive down. Now notice this one's a little different. Now it has these little ridges right here. Well, those little ridges are allowed to smooth and round out a little better quality than just that straight cone shape. And also, this one had a nice feature. It has a clutch inside of here. So it prevents me from over tightening this copper. So as I'm tightening this in, if it gets too thick or too much pressure, this starts to slip inside of here so that I don't mess up that flare. So I don't squeeze this copper and make this copper too thin. There's also another type that we have that fits on a drill. And I've used that before. I really like it. But uh, we put that one in a drill. And as we drill it in, it anneals the copper. It gets the copper really, really hot. makes the copper soft. So that way it's not leaving any hard edges or cracks. And they say that one has really good benefits. But the key is learn how to do the flare. Practice it. Learn how to make your good flares. Practice cutting them off. Use the nylog. So whichever tool it is you use, whichever method you work, practice at it. Perfect it.